The Honorable Member from Mount Pearl South. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, certainly a pleasure to have uh, another opportunity to stand in this Honorable House and say a few words. And, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, you know, as I said the uh, first time I spoke in this session, um, I'm certainly intending on acknowledging when good things are happening, uh, but I'm not going to criticize for the sake of being critical. And I think it's important to note that when members of the opposition raise legitimate concerns that are being presented to them by the people, that's who we're all here to serve, when people raise legitimate concerns and opposition asks questions or questions decisions of government or, you know, doesn't necessarily paint this bright rosy picture that everything is perfect and doesn't stand up to, you know, actually thanking the government and thanking the minister because, you know, they actually put down some asphalt or thanking the minister because they invested in health care or thanking the minister because they invested in education or thanking the minister because they invested in fisheries. I, I, I think, uh, Mr. Speaker, we all recognize that um, government is charged with the task of taking the tax dollars which all of us uh, contribute. We go to work, we earn money, we pay taxes. We pay income tax, we pay sales tax, we pay gas tax, we pay fees for various things and all that money goes into the government coffers and I think there's an expectation and there's an expectation from the taxpayer that government is going to take that money and invest in all those things. So I don't know that we necessarily have to get into this mode of patting ourselves on the back for actually spending the money that the people of Newfoundland and Labrador are paying. It's not, like the, it's not like the government is like writing the check with their own personal bank account, you know, going into their bank account and writing a personal check to pay someone's road or writing a personal check to pay for a health care center or writing a personal check to upgrade the school. So they're only really doing what they're elected to do. We all are. That being said, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, as I indicated, as members of the opposition, we have a role over here to certainly acknowledge when government makes wise decisions but also to question some of the decisions that are being made, particularly when it's having a negative impact on our districts and of the people of Newfoundland and Labrador in general. Now, Mr. Chair, one of the uh, issues that I think we certainly all have that occurred back in uh, January was dark NL, as it was referred to. And uh, some people referred to it as a crisis or not a crisis and I believe in the throne speech it was referred to as a disruption for for the disruptions for some were particularly significant so it was a particularly significant disruption and uh, you know Mr. Chair that was an issue that a number of people have concerns about uh, there was a number of people, certainly in my district, in the city of Mount Pearl in general, the city of St. John's, all throughout the province. People I spoke to in my district, people I spoke to around the metro area, as I said before, family members, friends I have around Newfoundland and Labrador, and all members, I think, received those calls and heard those concerns. And so, you know, as a result, one of the things that we want to know on the opposition side, for sure, is what went wrong. And what can we do to make sure it doesn't happen again? Now, it's interesting. I saw a, uh, an article in the media this morning. I believe it was on VOCM. And in that particular article, it was quoting Mr. Martin, Newfoundland Hydro. And it was interesting. Uh, Mr. Martin's uh, comments, as quoted in VOCM, says, Martin acknowledges that they have to restore public confidence in the electrical system. No kidding. However, he says they're doing all the right things. They're doing all the right things. It's just that they have to do it better. So they're doing everything right, 
but they need to do it better. So it's kind of a contradiction in terms. And in terms of some of the things they said that they have to do, he's indicated they have to add 100 megawatts of power for the Avalon. They've indicated that they have to overhaul the gas turbines at Stephenville, at Stephenville and at Hardwoods. They've indicated they have to keep more spare components in circulation. They have to replace their 230 breakers. Uh, and they're going to give ratepayers more than a few hours' notice if there's more blackouts. Now, Mr. Uh, Chair, I have to say that although they're doing everything right, they've listed all of these issues that have to be addressed. So again, if we look at the issue, for example, of overhauling the gas turbines at Stephenville and Hardwoods, now one would have to ask, why is it that after we've had Dark NL, the non-crisis, after that's happened, now we realize we have to overhaul the turbines at Stephenville and the Hardwoods, particularly given we're doing everything right? To me, that would the question that would come to my mind is, well, why wasn't that done to begin with? Because I, felt, I, felt, I found it really strange at the time when it happened, they were talking about, I believe it was the fuel lines. I believe it was the fuel lines uh, to both of those uh, turp gas turbines that basically busted or whatever that had to be uh, repaired and so on. And that happened at both Stephenville and Hardwoods. So the question would have to come, you, you'd have to ask the question, well, gee whiz, so yeah, that's what happened. You have to overhaul it now. Why didn't you overhaul it last year? Why didn't you overhaul it the year before last or the year before that? What maintenance, what maintenance was being uh, uh, done in the past that caused that to happen? So then we look at, uh, you know, we have to replace 230 breakers. Not one breaker, right? Not 10, not 15. 230 breakers have to be replaced. I mean, yeah, it sounds, it sounds like the breaker is broken to me. We have to replace them all. You know, we're talking about, we're talking about all these things. So, you know, you would have to ask yourself, you'd have to ask yourself, how did it get to that state of disrepair to begin with? And I got to believe in my, own, in my own heart and mind here, we have professional people, employees, that are working for Newfoundland uh, Hydro. They know what they're doing, I'm, I'm sure. So how could we get to a point that there would be this much maintenance that is now all of a sudden required, even though we were doing everything right, how come we have all this maintenance that's all of a sudden required, and wouldn't somebody who is working there, an employee on the ground who is, you know, who has his papers, he's a, a, a millwright, an electrician, or whatever the particular trade might be, one would think that those people would know that these turbines would be have, to, have to be overhauled, they would know that these breakers would have to be replaced, they would know there was issues, they would know that maintenance would have to be done. Which leads me then to ask the question, well, Assuming these people know what they're doing, and I certainly believe they do, then perhaps they were given direction not to do it. And I think that that's, you know, some of the questions that come to mind. Maybe they were given direction not to do it. And why would they have been given direction not to do it? And I think it might be a case, you know, I had a person who sort of raised the issue with me and said, well, it's kind of like if I'm going to buy a brand new car, and I have an old car, then I let the maintenance go, because I'm going to get a new car in the spring anyway. So something goes wrong, I don't really need to do that. I, something else, I can get by with that. I, I think it's a case of decisions being made. I think there's cases, I, I, I believe that we're into a situation where somebody got caught with their pants down. That's what happened. They got caught with their pants down. Now I know the members across the way don't want to hear that. They don't, the, the members across the way, they don't want to hear that. I know it's embarrassing. I understand like that they would be embarrassing. I can see there's a lot of red faces over there. But you know, uh, Mr. Chair, 
These are important questions. These are important questions that had to be asked, and I will continue to ask these questions, as will the rest of my colleagues Order, on this please. side of the House. Order, please. Because that is Members our role. Thank you, Mr. Speaking Chair. Speaking has expired.